Hey, I'm, I'm Scotty T from New oh. Comedy Minute. I'm here with Missy Hall, Hello. the queen of happy things. I couldn't be happier to have you here, Missy. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Oh, thank stop you. it. But Don't start off by stop. lying. Stop. Don't start <laughs> off by lying. You're in <laughs> Delaware. I am in Delaware. I've been there. As a matter of fact, I, I think it's okay because it's on your feet. You're in Wilmington, Delaware. Yep. Yep. I'm in Wilmington. You go to a bar there called Stanley's. Is it still there? Stanley's is. I haven't now, I haven't been there in a number of years, but Stanley Taverns, right? Like up on 202, it's, I think. Well, it's a big, it was a big place. It used to be yes. owned by Bill Bergie. That's yeah, Philadelphia Eagle. Okay, that I don't know, but um, I do know Stanley Tavern is still there. It's still <laughs> okay. there. Okay. Yep. So were you born and raised in Delaware? I was born outside of D.C. Okay. Um, lived in Salisbury, Maryland until I was about 10. Salisbury, Maryland, Ocean City. Yes. My first waves that ever knocked me over and sucked me out were uh, in Ocean City, Maryland. Yeah. And then I moved to Milford, Delaware, booming yeah. metropolis. No. And came up to the northern part of the state for college and just really have never left. It's too expensive to leave. That's funny you'd mentioned Salisbury. My friend Wookie, uh, program director of OC 104 for many years. I used to, oh. I don't know if you remember that or not, but. Oh, I was nine. I don't remember anything. I had a lot of good times there. Oh, cool. And, uh, now, I knew the answer, but for people that don't know you, Missy, when yeah. did you start doing comedy? I started doing comedy when I was about 45, so 12 years ago, about like 2012, 2013, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a YouTube video up from like 10 years ago, so I knew it yeah. was over 10. Yeah, and that was the first show I'd ever done. That really? was the first I'd ever been asked to do okay, comedy. Okay. Well, yep. and, and the follow-up question I always ask is, was there a catalyst, you know, all that time ago that said, go ahead, uh, you know, Missy, it's your time, do comedy. Okay. Let's be clear. I have, it's the dumbest story you will ever hear. Oh, no, I, no. <laughs> I'd never even, I never even watched comedy. I'd okay. always been an actor, singer, and a teacher. Okay. And people kept saying, you're funny, you're funny, you should try stand-up. You right. should try yeah. You should try stand up. I didn't even really know what that meant. Right. And um, I was directing a lot of kids productions and adult productions at a local theater. And I would go out and talk to the audience beforehand and they'd laugh. So people were like, you're really funny. Um, a group was getting ready to film a web special. This is way back, you know, over 10 years okay. for another comedian. They're like, will you come do warm up for the crowd? I'm like, Sure. I did not know what that means, but you I'm a never, huge fan. You've never done comedy. Never. No, okay. but I'm a, huge, I'm a huge fan of just saying yes and then figuring it out. <laughs> so I went, that's the video that you saw was the first time I'd ever stood up to do it. They just happened okay. to record it. And um, I think that's, I, I, if it's the same video I'm thinking of, if it's a different it's video. It's a different one. one, but that's okay. okay I'll go sorry. Along with you. Just go, yeah. I'm just so going that, that night, um, I had fun. I didn't really know what I was doing, but it came out nice because that label was like, the audience really liked you. We'd, we'd love to record an album with you. I'm like, okay. And they're like, do you think you could do 90 minutes? And I said, sure. But I'd never done anything. Right. So we just, and again, it was a small town. I was local. So everybody came. We filled that little theater, little black box theater, and we filmed it. And it was submitted to the Grammys and it made the first round of Grammy right. nominations. Well, and I, that's the first comedy show I ever did. And well, it's, you jumped ahead there a little bit because I've written down you have several albums out 50 Shades yeah. of 50. Yeah. And there's a new one, but that one, you the first one was yeah, you sit on the Grammy list, right? Yes. That's yes. amazing. Yep. And it's so funny because I didn't know comedy. My name at the time was Grinkowitz. So I'm sandwiched between like there's, you know, Jim Gaffigan, Kathy Griffin and Gary Goldman. And I'm like, those people must be looking and going, who the hell is Missy Grinkowitz? Right. Yeah. I noticed that. On the yeah. Other videos. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, who is that? But um, and then I it was probably about a almost a year before I did anything else because I didn't really know okay. what to do. 
right? So right. I, you know, I'd never done the the open mics or anything like that. And I started getting booked on a couple of showcases and just kind of be bopped along. Yeah. And here we are. And here you are sitting on your comedy minute. Mm, boy. Oh, my comedy minute. I got a dog on each side of me. <laughs> you, you, you hit the big time now. <laughs> <laughs> a girl's dreams do come true. <laughs> oh, now they do. Stop they it. do. <laughs> Let's shift gears. And this is, again, I know it's a comedy show, but I want to bring it up because it's important. Yeah. Uh, you're a breast cancer survivor, and yeah. I'm so thankful that you're okay. Thank uh, you. you know, I have friends that lost their, you know, wives and, and that. And I know besides that, the reason I bring it up is because there's a podcast that you've been on all, yeah. what, 20 sometimes or something. It's over well, 40. Yeah. yeah. Tell You can tell the folks about that if you want. I just wanted to mention it. Yeah, thank you. Um, it is, it's become very important. Um, it, is important. Cures, it is important. Yeah. That's why I brought it up. Yeah, Comedy Cures, which is a foundation okay. um, by Saren Rothberg, also okay. a cancer survivor. Um, I had done comedy shows for that organization long before my diagnosis. Okay. And um, when I found out I had cancer, I started talking to Saren, who is doing a daily podcast, right. just a little blast to kind of talk to cancer patients, caregivers, survivors. And she invited me on and we kind of took my entire story from diagnosis through all my treatment and now in survivorship and all of that. Um, I'm featured to kind of share my story, but also talk about forming the comic perspective. Yeah. in all of it. And it's in over 92 countries now. Um, and selfishly, it's been wonderful for me, you know, to get to process all of those kinds of things out loud. Also, while thinking I might actually get to help somebody else. Yeah, really. It's, it's been a blessing. It really has been. Yeah. Well, and I could have skipped over it. But I, I, I feel it's important too. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. Important. Very important. Absolutely. Let's move on because we're going to get to some meat here now. Sure. Women of certain age and ladies of laughter, uh -huh. uh, you guys were out on the road this past week or so. Uh, <laughs> when I say you guys, because you posted some videos, it was Vanessa Hollingshead and Carol yeah. Montgomery. I love and, them. Love uh, them so much. Vanessa's been on the show. I'm trying to kiss Carol's butt to get her come on. But... Um, <laughs> I was laughing because the videos that you posted, I was getting material because I knew we had this coming up. Mm -hmm. And so I first want to talk about you're not a, a, a bougie girl, but you had some Prada shoes on. Yes. It was so exciting. They are not my Prada shoes. I those, think. Yeah. Those <laughs> Prada shoes belong to Vanessa. And you right. shouldn't have I figured so fast. You should have been able to say, well, you seem like a Prada girl, but you're like, mm -mm, right away. I knew not her. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like, don't think I didn't notice that. <laughs> I, I, I had her on. I know. I, she scared the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. So, so she had, I was telling her, like, she's like the Prada. And here's the kind of person she is. It was amazing. Vanessa's like, you get to wear them tomorrow night. She's like, I want you to have the experience of knowing you're wearing some Prada shoes. But here's the thing. I have like an old lady bunion and a bad <laughs> knee. And my bunion's like sticking out the side of the Prada. <laughs> and my knee, I'm walking like not well. So well, I wore them funny. while seated in the dressing room and felt <laughs> fancy and then Gave them back and to their Carol record. comes over in her sketchers. In her sketchers. <laughs> but the reason, the reason I brought that up was because I believe it was the next day. I'm sitting there looking at my phone with one bloodshot eye. Just woke up, hung over, and we're <laughs> at a, a cracker barrel dress. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> No, <laughs> part of that story is true. <laughs> no, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's just we went. Uh, in other words, imagine I go to bed. <laughs> we got the bougie Brada. you girl. I'm interviewing and today, her, and now we got the Cracker Barrel dress. 
It's and you. And yay, right? You were so proud of that effing dress. Okay. First of all, the dress is adorable. Oh, yeah. It was a... Nah. Love it. Se second of all, 60% off. Yep. You, and you told me that. Cracker Barrel. Yeah. In Cracker Barrel, I could get pancakes and a dress. Like, it was the best. It was the best. I will sport that dress proudly and tell whoever will listen to me that it is from Cracker Barrel. Because I'm... I'm aiming to be like the Cracker Barrel model. Yeah, like that's what, that's me. <laughs> and you know, I've only ever been in one one time, uh -huh. and I can't say that the food was that amazing. But I thought it was weird because it was like a gift shop. Yeah, it yeah. was like a gift. there was all this stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. and we spent more time in the gift shop when you know I think I got some chicken fried steak or something that was mediocre, but. I said, this lady wants yes. to be the queen of the Cracker Barrel. I do. I want to be the Cracker Barrel lady. Have you, have, you been, have you been in a lot of Cracker Barrels? I am embarrassed to admit how many Cracker Barrels I have been in. Like, if there is a Cracker Barrel <laughs> when I'm on the road, I got to go. Got to go. And there's a Cracker Barrel in Elkton. There's a Cracker Barrel right over the bridge in, in uh, okay. Jersey. So if I get a hankering, I will, my husband and I will go to Cracker Barrel. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I, I love, and you're right. The food is not delicious, but it's just, no, a, it happy, it it's a happy seem place. To matter. It seem no, to it, and they got the old fashioned candy there. And now I've gotten, <laughs> I've gotten several wardrobe pieces. I got Cracker Barrel pants, a dress, a couple scarves, and even some earrings from the Cracker Barrel. Okay. Yeah. The Prada shoes with those. <laughs> Just all gonna... right, all right. Let's let's move on. Um, one other video I saw, and I just want to mention this because I, I I I thought it was funny. You guys went to Dairy Queen, yes. and Vanessa has a thing with ice cream. She mentioned she did a story when she was on my show about <laughs> it, and I sent her. I think I sent it to you too. My grandfather built the first Dairy Queen in Pennsylvania. <laughs> that. That is like the best credit you could pop. You should open with that every <laughs> conversation that you have. I don't know why you start with, hey, I'm so-and-so. That's your opener. And that is your opener. <laughs> Dairy Queen. Yeah, I started working there when I was 12. Oh, my, my dad with a whip. $4 oh. an hour. Four dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah, but oh, did you get to eat all the fried ice cream you wanted? Um, well, what do you think of I'm so so fat? This is all ice cream, right? <laughs> yeah, but, well, no, it, it, there might be some beer and some vodka. And other, <laughs> my little pot problem I got. Um, <laughs> the hallway. I saw the videos, uh, a couple of videos on YouTube. And it's with your husband, I believe, correct? Yeah, it is. And you can tell the people about that because I think it was really, it was really cool. One of the things, and you know, and this is, when I'm plugging stuff, this is what I love to talk about the most. Because every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, my husband and I sit right here on this couch. My husband is also a comic. That is how we met. And we have like just our date night. So we end up just talking but we have now at least 80 or so people that join us for the hour and we just go back and forth. We talk about stuff that's going on in our lives with the dogs. Um, then yeah, we do I saw the dog. Oh, the one, the one knocked that thing down be back behind you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which like episode out. one. No, no, no. Yeah. The picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This knocked dog. The picture down. Yes. Trying to climb up here, knock the picture down on Jeremy's head. Yeah, there's always. <laughs> It, there's always chaos. It's always dumb, yeah. but it is so much fun. And I what's been even, awesome, you know what? Not to interrupt you. I didn't even notice the dog behind you. Now look, we woke. Yeah. And there's another one over there. Oh yeah, they're so used to Zoom calls. They'll sit here and they know when an hour's <laughs> over. You can see them start to get up. And they know. Well, um, they're good news today. There's only forty minutes today. I see? Oh, oh so Lila's like, oh, am I, I done? Was open. I'm out. Wait, <laughs> hey, Missy, that's what I was hoping for. I want. I love dogs. Oh my gosh! Yeah, look at her little face, Delilah. I love her. I love her. <laughs> oh, it's the I best. Bet. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're always here, but, but we anyway, do. I'm, I'm sorry. I just I, the hallway show. Go ahead. I'm oh yeah. No, what's been so lovely, Scott, is with the viewers. You know, we talk kind of talk back and forth. We talked, you know, to each other. But 
a lot of people have then started coming to comedy shows. So I get to meet them in real life. And, yeah. you know, some people that watch us online were able to get tickets to go see me when I was in Michigan. So it's been a nice way to connect with people cool. from all over. And it's just, it's been really, really fun. And it's free for everybody. And it's just yeah. been a really nice thing. It's been a really well, fun and, thing. And not that I can even hold a candle to you, young lady, but okay. I did 105 YouTube lives. And I used to, yeah, I used to do them every, I would do, I got for fiend for a punishment. I was doing them every Monday. Then I started doubling, doing Monday and Friday. Oh my but gosh. A half hour without a net, just me bullshit and trying to get my way yeah. through it. But I found the same thing that these people would start showing up yeah. and every week, you know, they were looking forward to it. Matter of fact, their, their, their tagline was I tune in just to see if Scotty's going to get canceled this week, you know, cause <laughs> I do some pretty edgy stuff. I'd always end with some really nasty jokes and, you know, but it is, it was, and I still have a lot of those people, like you said, that were, you know, I miss your live show. I miss your live show. Yeah. I mean, I may go back to doing them, but I really like doing this right now. This is what I'm into. The, well, I'm I, I'm having a blast now, but but you're right. When you whenever you get to connect with people like in real right. time, I don't know. I we've really enjoyed it, and it also forces Jeremy and I to sit down with each other. Yeah. You know, it's, our, it's kind of date night. We laugh. We're like, well, we need to yeah, have. Yeah, that's what you call it, the date night. Yeah, it, it's a date night, and it's really been lovely because we connect but we connect with other people and we talk and it's just it's really been lovely some of my funniest memories of doing those is when i would do a story uh i just sent one to steve do you know steve goldberg he's coming out of new york i sent him a story that i did you know like just amazing stories that you just you you, know, you get them out of the new york post and say i just can't believe this you know but the comments that people would write, I would just crack up because, you know, it's just they, they had a, a take on it different than I did. Oh, see, those kinds of things, you it's gold. It's comedy gold. Yeah, it really and, then, is. When, and then when ridiculous things happen, like a picture falls off the wall or yeah, like yeah, we, yeah. We, we went live and I had my husband's birthday wrong in front of everybody. And other viewers <laughs> are like, um, that's not his birthday. Like it was like it's just been like some of the biggest belly laughs over just dumb real life stuff yeah, yeah, and yeah. i've loved it so much and then again and then like i said a lot of those people will end up coming out to shows and it's just yeah. it's a very happy thing i'm, I'm finding people. that myself that the true awesome. true stuff is is the funniest stuff when it happens you know when i get on a rant and my temper gets flaring like a pack of hemorrhoids that's when that's when we got problems <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like yep. that. I like that analogy. That's good. <laughs> well, I, you know, <laughs> I put a shoe in their ass. Some, some people come on here. I just want to put a shoe in their ass. <laughs> I'm not doing any jokes. Well, yeah. why, why did you want to come on the show? I just don't do material. I'm not. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Yes, keep going. You have a favorite show, okay, all these years you've been doing it, a favorite show, and then you know what the follow-up question is. Least favorite show. Least favorite show, okay. So do, the favorite, do the favorite show. First. Okay. Okay, favorite show. You can do a couple. I like you. I'm going to let you do a couple. Okay, thank you. I think my <laughs> one of my, the favorite show that like literally in the middle of my set I was like, this moment is awesome. Like, I really had like that kind of moment. Okay. I was on the road with um, Carol Montgomery and Caroline Ray. Okay. And I was doing my set. We were in this theater and the audience was just roaring laughing. I could see Carol like cheering off stage. And I had literally in my head, I was like, I'm not going to forget this. This is a big, this is a really big, cool show. Do you remember? And, the, do you remember the, what room it was? Where, where I you don't. Were? I, we were in Oklahoma, okay. so and it was at a theater in Oklahoma. And I have the worst memory in the whole wide no, world. I, I just wanted to mention okay. it in case you know you you wanted to mention the club, whatever. Yeah, it wasn't a club. It was a theater. I think we were in Tulsa. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, and it was a huge theater. Like it was a really big theater, okay. and it was just it was. You were so just killing. And. 
And I don't like to say I was killing because that just sounds so pretentious, but no, I was definitely, okay. I was having a really good set. The audience was super responsive and I just felt at that moment. Awesome. Yeah. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm on this show with these two phenomenal women. And it was yeah. just like, this is really cool. Yeah. I, I'm excited. I mean, it, I, I just, you tell me about it. I, I, I can picture it. Yeah, you know those moments where you're like, I'm really doing this. Like it just feel that yeah, yeah. I can still see the light. Like it was just, it was really yeah. that's really cool. Good. That's cool. Yeah. Least favorite show. Um <laughs> if you haven't figured it out, <laughs> this yeah. is, I laugh at the wrong stuff. I love a, so I love a train wreck. See, oh, I want to hear Oh yeah, the train wreck stories are the best. And I will tell you my uh, when my husband and I are on the same show, we watch for the screw-ups and just bust each other's chops the whole way home. <laughs> like it's comics always get that it's really better if something falls completely apart. You know, it's <laughs> really better. Um one I have two <laughs> I have two. The first one was when I was you know, after I had released the the album and it was going well, I got asked to do a showcase in Baltimore and I was at a dirty bar somewhere and I get up there and some guy just yells out, show us your tits. <laughs> nice, nice. So I just went, dad? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and That's great. But then I didn't know where to go, like, so I had the crowd, but it was just like, I remember standing there. I'm like, I have a mortgage and a teenage daughter. Why? Why am I in a dirty bar? Like, it was just this moment of like. <laughs> kind of like, kind of the reverse of the moment with Carol. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> reverse. What am I doing? In this? <laughs> right. I'm like, why? I'm like, I got, I, yeah, I just felt so, I was like, oh, is this the path I've chosen? Like, I feel like I may have made an error in judgment. <laughs> can I, can I try and share one with you? Similar. Cause I, Please. It, it conjured, that's what happens. So, you know, I've, I've done a lot best. of drinking and drugs and alcohol and stuff over the years. I've been in the music business my whole life. I remember being in a nine 30 club in Washington, DC with like Bauhaus or some. And I looked over and there's Edward Scissorhands piercings, <laughs> I thought to myself, boy, Scotty, you should have paid better attention in school. <laughs> yes. You're like, maybe algebra would have helped me. Maybe I should have. Yes. Maybe I should have. I mean, it, there's nothing like a piss filled, piss smelling room with Edward Scissor hands and all these. <laughs> I, 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 I can feel your pain. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was awful. And the, the other one I had was like kind of post not quite post pandemic that was this right. outside show but it was on a giant bouncy house kind of thing in the rain but everybody had to stay in their cars and we were on a on a and I'm like we're going to be electrocuted they had these big giant <laughs> screens to show the comics and the people just were supposed to flash their lights on if they thought something was funny and it was <laughs> awful. I'm like, I'm going to die electrocuted on this bounce <laughs> house with an electric microphone in my hand with people flashing their lights at me. And just the <laughs> giant screen of my big old hair. Like, it was oh, awful. God. And I think I oh, did like 35 God. minutes. It felt like I was standing there for days. It was awful. Oh my God. You're killing me. It was awful. It You're was so bad. It. And then I had to go through the mud back to my car. Once again, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I'm 50. Like, <laughs> is this what? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's bad enough to be in the mud in a field at some big party situation when you're right. 29. But when you're 50, it's a lot. I, it's I, a lot. I, I can relate. I can relate. I can relate. Um, do you have comedians that inspired you when you were young and follow up as comedians that you like now that, you know, younger comedians or whatever? Yeah, it's interesting. Again, I didn't get into comedy because of comedians. It was just like okay. people thought you were funny. But I do remember 
So many years ago, way before com comedy was even a dream of mine, I'd seen Paula Poundstone. Yeah. And I remember thinking she was super she's duper. Good. She's so, so good. And now it's so hard because I'm like, well, well, he, you know, this, my oncologist, um, when I was going in to get ready for radiation and the, the radiology oncologist is like, Oh, you're a comedian. He's like, who's your favorite comedian? I'm like, who's your favorite radiologist? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you've been watching all the radiology specials on Netflix. I'm like, I can't narrow it down. So in like, other words, Scotty, that's a shitty question. <laughs> no, here's the thing. It's just too. Okay. It's like asking me my favorite ice cream. Like, okay, are you well, are you an ice cream nut like like Vanessa? Yes, yes, but Did there's different it? categories. We're ready to say. Go ahead and say. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's a problem. And there's the categories. I'm like, well, it depends. And Hagen Dazs, I like this. And Ben and Jerry's like this. And soft serve. So same with comedy. Are you talking about comics that I've actually met in person? <laughs> comics that I've just seen on TV. Like, there's so many that all I. All right, all right, I got it. It was a shitty question. I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> we ever okay? I'll, I'll do this. In other words, like, if you were my Facebook page, I have picture with Ringo Starr. Ooh, Beetle. yeah. Or yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. or you know, when I was with Cheap yeah. Trick, I'm a big fan of Cheap Trick. Uh, that I kind of sat there, kind of pinching myself. Did you ever have a moment like that? Um, if I ever got to meet Tina Fey, I oh, think yeah. I'd be a little fangirly. I yeah. think I would be very fangirly. I was a little when I I got asked to open for John Lovitz when he was here in Delaware, no and shit. yeah, that was really cool. And I'm just standing there in the green room with them. Um, and he's writing down his intro from me for me because some nobody else had given it to me. And I'm wow. like, I'm standing here shoulder to shoulder with John Lovitz and he's writing on an index card <laughs> next to me. I'm like, what? That way it was kind of surreal, right? It yeah, was kind of yeah. surreal. It was pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. And it wasn't like big conversations or anything. It was just like ordinary green room. Here's my intro. And I'm like, I'm like John Lovitz just wrote this for I don't know, it was pretty cool. Did you keep the card? Yeah, it's hanging in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the same way. I'm yeah, the yeah, same yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when I, I and I'm I'm a lummox. I when I met Kiss, I was actually backstage to meet Ace and Peter, and I was wow. so uh, the verve pipe was opening up on I was working yeah, for yeah. it. And I was so nervous and everything, you know, because it wasn't my act. If it was my act, it would have been fine. But here I'm meeting Kiss, and I turned around and walked right into Gene Simmons' chest, right into his – he had his boots on. Oh, man. Yeah. Embarrassed as hell. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that's it. When um, I got to do warm-up for a couple weeks when Harry Connick Jr. had his TV show. Okay. And I'm standing there, and I turn around, and um, Megan Malawi from – yeah, yeah, I so, yeah, uh, I knew the show. That called? Will, Will and Grace. Grace was standing there, and I was like, <laughs> you know, because I'd love that show, yeah. so much. And I'm like, I'm standing, it, it, yeah, those yeah, moments, kind of cool, kind of cool. Yeah. I, I've been yeah, blessed like that so a few cool. times, like Whitney Houston, <laughs> Madison Square Garden. That was pretty wild for me. Wow. Yeah, I had some moments too. I had a few. None of them topped this though. This is this oh is, yes, I, we're. I'm so lucky I have the queen of happy things here. <laughs> you are so. Oh my god! Do you know? You know another comedy show. I was hired as an ambush, like surprise party comic for a small private okay. party. I mean, like literally twelve people in a restaurant. I was supposed to go in and pretend like I the doctor had been my sir. It was ridiculous. But right. I get there. One of the guests is Joan Rivers' nephew. Okay. The other two are good friends with Taylor Swift's family. And they're telling me this. And I'm like, well, then I can see why you people would want me here tonight. Like, this is a big <laughs> night for you people. You got Missy Paul right here. I'm like, what? Why? Why am I here? Why would you pick me for this? <laughs> oh, God, you're hilarious. <laughs> I I've had a wonderful time. I think you're fantastic. Oh, you're so we could, we could probably you know we could probably do another one of these because you have so many stories. Yeah, it's that's what happens when you are an old lady. The stories oh. pile up. 
I'm 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 older than you. I'm 62. I just turned 62. 57 now. Okay. All right. Well, I still got a few years on you, and I got a few years. Yeah. I, I've worked. I had a pretty rough one. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> as, as my father used to say, I got one foot in the grave and the other in a banana peel. Oh. But listen, we're going to run out of time. Okay. Go go and, go. And listen, we, yeah. If you want, you know, come back. We'll do another one down the road if you're sure. into it. But for now, you know what time it is. It is the comedy minute, right? Missy Hall. Missy. Hall. Hang on. Queen of happy thing. Missy Hall, Queen of Happy I Things. Was, I, I'm looking at it. I'm trying to get it right. I know. Missy Hall, Queen of Happy Things. Yes. Your comedy minute. Go ahead. My comedy minute. I forgot I what I'm supposed to hear. Do I know? Oh, can I? This happened this morning. You can I, do whatever uh, you want. It's your comedy minute, Missy okay. Hall. Okay. Well, first Queen of, of all, happy I, things. I want people to go to my Facebook fan page, Missy Hall, Queen of Happy Things, and watch the hallway with my husband and I. Like okay. you got to do that. But for today, you people, you got to know I um I'm a breast cancer survivor. I'm fine, but I did just have shingles, and I have something going on like right no, here. No, no. Don't Stop. worry, right here between. See, it's okay. boob adjacent. <laughs> Boob adjacent. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. So I go to the doctor and she's looking and she's like, well, we should get a mammogram. I'm like, that's not my breast. It's between my breast. So she's like, okay, I think you've got a secondary infection, blah, 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 blah. She's like, okay, we're going to call for the ultrasound. So I go to, I call to schedule the ultrasound. He's like, well, which breast is it? I'm like, it's not my breast at all. He's like, okay, well, let me hook you up with somebody else. Cause we only do the mammograms. Another call. <laughs> They're like, which breast? I'm like, it's not my breast. It's between my breasts. The guy's like the right breast or the left breast. I'm like, between them. <laughs> between. I'm like, are you straight? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, okay, where are your motorboat? It's the motorboat part. <laughs> he goes, got it. I'm like, put that in my chart, please. Almost <laughs> down the motorboat area. <laughs> okay. All right. That's that's dynamite. I, it's you know, horrible, but it's all I could come up with. You no, know, but I, I tell you what, see, and when you did it, I watch a lot of stuff before I have someone on, and you had a thing about uh, having to get uh, anal, uh, <laughs> vaginal, yeah, the transvaginal ultrasound. <laughs> no, but there was another one about it. They always want to look in your book, <laughs> right? They always yes, want to look in, in your, your physical. Butt. Like, what are you looking for? I'm just here for a dentist appointment. You know, I'm getting my teeth cleaned. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny. I, I hear love these that. That was a great I'm bit. I'm kind of disgusting. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just here to get my teeth clean. Why are you looking at my butt? Well, look, let me stop the recording so we can spend it a minute or two off the air. Okay. I truly am grateful. And wow. I will put all the links to your Facebook, your Instagram, Thank your you. YouTube. Uh, if you have TikTok, I'll do that. I'll put all the links to everything. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Thank you very much for having it me. It was a it's pleasure. Let me stop the recording.